as he was reading those remarks and I sat there and was thinking, okay, what's the most important experience that I have gotten through my years? And it's absolutely being able to work within a crisis situation. So <laughs> I have, I started out at Chicago Foundation for Women and I said, no, we, trust me, we don't deal with any crisis here. These, we're, these are not crisis. Yesterday afternoon, late, I said, this is a crisis. <laughs> so we have 2,000 of our favorite people coming for lunch tomorrow. <laughs> we, 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 we will figure this out. So as I said, 2,000 of the best people in Chicago here having lunch with us today. Welcome. I am honored to be here speaking on behalf of the entire Foundation family, our Board of Directors, our Alumni Council, our Leadership Councils, our Community Partners, our grantees, and of course, our donors. I want to start with a special thanks to our benefactor sponsors, uh, Macy's, you just heard from Ralph, and the Richard H. Driehaus Foundation, so thank you. And a thank you to Total Works, who receives our total gratitude for providing the in-kind design work for all of today's publications. You may have also noticed the tote bags. Those were donated by Patel Handicrafts. And inside each of those, you'll find lots of information, including an issue of this month's Today's Chicago Woman magazine, with a profile of our very own Faye Clayton on page 29. I also want to say a special thank you to the staff that have worked, I mean, I wrote these remarks prior to what we've been through in the last 12 hours, <laughs> and so I cannot, I want to bow down to the staff <laughs> that, that have worked so hard every day to raise the money to make meaningful grants, provide technical assistance and support, champion issues and partners in our community, manage the administration and finances at Chicago Foundation for Women. If you see one of them working in the room today, take a moment to stop and just say thank you. They work very hard. More than 24 years ago, the foundation was created by four visionary women. Our inimitable founders, Marjorie Craig Benton, Lucia Woods Lindley, Iris Krieg, and Sonny Fisher. They were frustrated with the level of philanthropic dollars that were going to support programs specifically addressing the needs of women and girls. At that time, it was only about 3% of philanthropic dollars that went to programs addressing things like domestic violence, reproductive health, women's economic security, sexual assault, and other issues that were critical to the well-being of thousands of females in Chicago, and by extension, thousands of families women were truly getting short shrift. Women have made great strides over the past 24 years, as has Chicago Foundation for Women. Many times the foundation has provided the first critical seed money, taking a chance on innovative and creative programs designed to address underserved populations and communities. Pro programs like Apnagar, which means our home in, Hindu, in Hindi and Urdu. When it opened 20 years ago, Apnagar was one of the country's first transitional shelter and social agencies serving Asian survivors of domestic violence. Today, Apnagar not only offers multilingual, culturally appropriate services to any woman who walks in their door, they also provide a safe space for supervised child visitation and offer the women they serve opportunities to achieve economic security and independence. They are a model program that offers training to other service providers statewide. Chicago Foundation for Women is proud to say we were some of their first dollars in, enabling Apnagar to take root and to grow. The foundation has distributed more than $17 million in grants to hundreds of organizations all across Chicago the Chicago metropolitan area. Our impact has been powerful. However, we still have a very long way to go. 
In 2003, only 0.6% of aid dollars had gender equality as a principal objective. And a 2006 report by the Association of Women in Development reported that only 7.3% of U.S. foundation giving in 2003 went to women and girls programs or initiatives. Yes, I want to make sure you heard that correctly. 7.3% of American foundation dollars in 2003 went to women and girls programs or initiatives. That's a 100% increase from what our founders first saw, but it's still less than 10% of foundation giving in the U.S. And this despite the fact that women are still making less money than men. In Illinois, that's 73 cents for every dollar paid to men, lower than the national average. Over a li lifetime, the pay gap shorts women $700,000 if they have high school degrees and even more with college or professional degrees. 1.2 million and $2 million respectively. So listen up all you professional women because we're talking real money. <clears throat> And for women of color, the pay gap is even wider. And despite the fact that domestic violence providers in Illinois are understaffed and underfunded, a recent one-day survey found that Illinois' programs serve nearly 3,000 victims of violence, but 1,000 other requests for help that very day went unanswered because of lack of funds. There was limited capacity because there was no money. And despite the fact that 80% of cases of child sexual abuse investigated last year in Illinois were perpetrated against girls. On the other end of the spectrum, 70% of elder abuse victims in 2000 in Illinois were women. And despite the fact that the complexity and intersection of the issues and problems associated with women and girls are interrelated. To give women and girls a chance, we must provide consistent financial support and affect systemic change in our health care, our educational, our criminal, and our civil legal system. <laughs> and perhaps more difficult, we must change the attitudes and beliefs that continue to maintain women and girls are inferior or weak or just not up to it. We are strong and we are capable and we just need the chance. We know, yes. Mm -hmm.